Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my career on bone health and longevity. Osteoporosis is a disease defined by loss of both bone quality and quantity. But how does that even happen? Stay tuned for a presentation where I'll go through some of the major causes of bone loss, what you should be looking for in your own life, and how you may be able to avoid it. All right, here's a sobering thought. Most of us are gonna lose bone as we age. Generally, we can figure out why you're losing bone, we can do something about it, and we can help improve bone quality and quantity. However, what I can't do anything about is your starting point. I can't go back to when you were in your 20s and your 30s, when you were developing your peak bone mass, which actually goes all the way back into childhood. I can't do anything about that. And possibly you may not have been able to either, because 80% of peak bone mass is driven by genetics. Clearly you can't change your genetics, but knowing your family history is really important because if you have a strong family history of fragility fracture, of osteoporosis, then you are at risk of A, not developing as much bone mass as you maybe could have, or B, losing bone more rapidly as a result of your genetic makeup. Now this isn't something that's easily testable, and we test a lot of genetics. There are not obvious polymorphisms for this that we can test and tell you if you're at risk or not. This is something that is actually better viewed through the lens of your family history, who has had osteoporosis, and who has had a fragility fracture. All right, the next big section is nutrient deficiencies. So this is a big one because this can come in all kinds of different flavors. So there's micronutrient deficiencies, macronutrient deficiencies, calorie deficiencies, inability both from absorbing it through your gut or you're just not consuming it through your diet, uh, even if you think you are, or if you're getting it from supplementation, but the supplementation isn't good. This is a really complex topic, but I'm gonna distill it down to this. You really need three major things in order to have all the stuff that you need to build bone. You need all the micronutrients. So that's over 20 minerals and vitamins that all need to be available to your body through your diet. You need adequate protein. This is really critical as we get older, it gets harder and harder to digest protein. Most people tend to eat less protein as they age. So my opinion is that we need to eat high quality protein that typically is gonna be an animal-based protein and you need to eat upwards of a gram per pound of body weight or potentially even more depending on your ability to absorb that. Most people are well below that recommendation. And lastly, you need adequate calories. So we have a problem in this country where we are pretty much chronically dieting. Most of us are overfed and undernourished. So we're getting heavier, we're becoming diabetic, but our nutrient capacity is actually going down. And that's why we're seeing more and more chronic disease, or at least it's one major reason. So you need those three things in order to be able to have enough nutrients, enough energy to actually build and maintain bone. So some takeaway tips here would be to eat a well-designed diet. I don't care what name you put on it. I don't care what if you're low carb, high carb, it doesn't really matter if according to your bones, you just have to eat a diet that is well-designed and very intentional and has adequate protein. That could be a keto diet, that can be a vegan diet. Most people are gonna be somewhere in between. Avoid chronic dieting because chronic dieting will lead to calorie malnutrition over time. Ultimately, usually protein malnutrition as well. Chronic dieting will lead to bone problems in most people. Avoid the calorie dense but nutrient poor foods, which is most of the processed food in our country. So if you're eating out a lot, if you're eating fast food, if you're eating packaged foods, you are likely eating those things that are calorie dense and nutrient poor. So really try to make your own food, use whole foods, uh, organic if possible, and try to do your own cooking. And lastly, avoid inflammatory foods. So for me, I find that most of my patients are intolerant to some, if not all grains. Wheat is a big offender for most people. Some vegetables, this is surprising to a lot of people, but some vegetables are actually inflammatory as well. So you may have to pull some vegetables out of your diet and elimination diet as a way to do that. And then lastly, sugar. So natural forms of sugar, honey, fruit, if you can tolerate the carbohydrates, that's great. If you can't, then you may need to limit those things. But added sugar is really the demon here, particularly added fructose by itself, high fructose corn syrup. It's in most processed foods. So again, avoiding processed foods will help, but lots of other uh, ways to get sugar in your diet from an added sugar perspective. So make sure you're eliminating those to help reduce your inflammation.
Sorry to interrupt, but if you are enjoying this content, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. More importantly, if you know somebody that would benefit from this type of content, please share this with them and let them know that we are here trying to deliver this content to people with osteoporosis and bone health questions. Most importantly, click the link in the description below to join our free masterclass on optimal bone health. All right, now the next section is gut function. Now, if you are eating the perfect diet, but your gut can't absorb it, it's not gonna do you any good. There are a lot of areas where this could be going wrong in your body. So this is where you really need to listen to your symptoms. Generally, you have to work with somebody to help understand uh, what's deficient. There are ways to do it on your own, but it can be pretty challenging. The areas where you may need assistance is in stomach acid. So a lot of people think that we have too much stomach acid. That's why everybody has acid reflux and GERD. Reality is, is that actually most people as they age are gonna have too little stomach acid. And rather than taking a PPI, which can inhibit bone growth and development or an H2 blocker, they should actually be taking something to help increase their stomach acid. So a lot of times we're treated inappropriately for, for things like GERD. So stomach acid is a big one. Uh, pancreatic enzymes, bile. So these are things that your body secretes um, that can help you to break down both proteins and fat with bile. If you don't have enough of either of those things, then you can see some, some dysfunction and inability to absorb important nutrients that way. The microbiome, this is a relatively new but quickly expanding field in the, the world of medicine. And your microbiome plays a significant role in a number of things, but in the absorption of nutrients, the utilization of things, and actually creating some nutrients like vitamin K is made by your gut bacteria. Um, so we're learning more and more about that. A lot of people have dysfunctional microbiome for a lot of different reasons. And that's something that is again, testable, or you can sort of shotgun approach it with things like probiotics. There are a lot of different ways that you can do that. So your takeaways here are that you want to optimize your function to the best of your ability. For a lot of people, this is gonna require some kind of testing to understand what kind of dysfunction you have. But the treatment fortunately is going to be aimed mostly at lifestyle, nutrition, and potentially supplementation. All right, the next tip, Muscle mass matters. So how much muscle you maintain as you age is strongly associated with how much bone mass you have as you age and vice versa. So there's a very strong correlation between the two. And this just makes sense because if you think about how bones develop, what they respond to is stress, physical loading. And while that can mean gravity on the ground, it also means the muscles as they attach to the bones they're pulling on the bone, they're imparting stress. That stress is what helps to create bone strength. So the less muscle you have, the weaker that pull is going to be on the bones and the lower your bone mass is going to be. So you really need to maintain muscle mass as we age. So here are my three tips to maintain muscle mass. Number one, eat an adequate protein diet, as we talked about before. Number two, resistance training. Yoga is great. Pilates is great. Walking is great. They all serve a purpose but resistance training is really the key. And then number three is optimize your hormones. Now this is a murky space and we'll have an entire talk on this, but having optimized hormones, particularly testosterone from a muscle mass perspective is going to allow you to continue to maintain muscle mass optimally over time. All right, the next big section is inflammation. So inflammation is probably one of the biggest risk factors for most chronic diseases in our society today. And that includes bone loss. When you are chronically inflamed, you have immune system dysfunction. You generally are going to have hormone dysfunction. You're going to have thyroid dysfunction. All of those systems are interrelated. And if you have a dysfunction in any of those systems, they can have an impact on your bone. So it's no surprise that inflammation can impact your bone. This has been very clearly shown in studies that increased inflammation equals increased bone breakdown, but not bone building. So you will end up losing bone rapidly and you're not growing bone very quickly. We see this all the time in our labs with elevated markers of inflammation, um, elevated markers of bone breakdown, but very low markers of bone um, building. And so that's something that we really need to watch for. To reduce inflammation, this is a really complex thing, but it is really lifestyle driven, nutrition driven, cleaning up your diet, improving your lifestyle around stress. Uh, those are gonna be two of the most impactful things if that's not enough, if you still have levels of inflammation, then you need to look for potentially chronic infections, toxicities from either environmental or heavy metals or other pollutants, mold. There are a lot of reasons why you can be chronically inflamed, but most people, if they focus on the lifestyle uh, and the nutrition, can knock down uh, chronic inflammation. 
All right, the next area of concern is tobacco and alcohol. So I don't think it's any surprise at this point that tobacco is bad for you. Tobacco in particular, not only are you, you know, you're smoking it and you're reducing blood flow, which is gonna have an impact on your bones and your overall health, but the cadmium and the nicotine that are in the tobacco are particularly troublesome. The cadmium as a heavy metal will have a tremendous impact on bone just by itself but the nicotine, the drug nicotine will also play a role as well. So I think we all know that smoking is unhealthy. Here's just another reason to quit smoking. Really at this point, nobody should be smoking tobacco. The reality is, is that we don't really know what's happening in vaping, depending on what the product is and how it's vaped. Ultimately, really, if you're consuming anything into your lungs that isn't air, then it's probably gonna hurt you. So we should probably not do that. The next thing is alcohol. Now, there's some discrepancy here. So there are some studies that show moderate alcohol, which is one, potentially two drinks a day, which I think is too many, um, may have a beneficial impact on bone. So if you wanted to make a case for drinking moderately, you could lean on that literature to support that. But here's the thing. So if you look at the cancer risk, the cancer literature, even one drink per week, particularly for women, will increase your risk of cancer. We know that when alcohol is broken down, it gets broken down into a very carcinogenic byproduct that your body then has to work really hard to excrete. So I don't really see a place for alcohol in a truly optimized diet. Um, there are social scenarios or, you know, some people would, they, that would use it for stress and say they can't de-stress otherwise. Okay, you can make that argument. I think if you really wanna clean up your diet, reduce your inflammation and live the cleanest life possible, Alcohol is just not a part of that. Thank you so much for listening and making it all the way to the end of the video. If you wanna learn more about osteoporosis, subscribe to this channel and we will send you notifications when new content is posted. If you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis with our 4R method, click on the link in the description and you can watch our free masterclass on osteoporosis and how we treat osteoporosis through optimal bone health. Lastly, I wanna hear from you. Let us know what topics about osteoporosis or longevity you want to hear. We will pick through these topics, we'll present Q and A's, we'll present full talks on uh, the most important things, uh, but ultimately we just we'll wanna hear from you and we wanna hear how this information is impacting you and what questions you have.